on this particular one, anions can exist on plaquettes and on vertices, so they are sort of collective plaquettes and four spins around plaquettes or four spins around surfaces. On vertices, there are five types of anions which we call E1, E2, E3, E4, E5. And on plaquettes, there's also five types of anions which we call M1, M5. And we define these in terms of projections, project on the four spins around this plaquette and vertex. So this uh, projector, for example, PEGV, is the projector onto the states on the vertex, or on the spins around the vertex, we, where there's an annual type EG living there. So uh, the syndrome measurements correspond to just looking at every plaquette and every vertex to see whether there's an anion there or not, if there is, what type of anion there is there. And if there's no anion, then you know you're in stable anion, so your, your quantum information is nice and protected. And if there are anions, you know an error has occurred, and you know what type of error has occurred, and you know that. So the operations that create anions on these, on this model, are just the uh, how we operate, the big and the big red. So the application of uh, this operation being with I, to the power of G on uh, a lattice spin, say this one here in the middle, will create uh, a pair of anions on the two vertices connected by that uh, spin. Uh, it will create EG on one of them and its antiparticles, uh, EG bar, on the other one. Definitely, uh, big Rex <coughs> G on that same spin will create M G and G bar on the black X shift where that spin. So, with the Boolean models, we would want to store quantum information using pairs of, of anions. It has to be pairs because of um, conservation. So we could store a logical state, uh, G, for example, using a pair of annuals um, on black heads, MG and its antiparticles, MG bar. But the trouble with that is that we have to hide these from the syndrome measurements somehow, because otherwise when we perform the syndrome measurements, we look at the annuals everywhere and we collapse any superposition to disturb the states of the logical um, that we store. So uh, one way to do this is just simply on certain packets and vertices on the lattice we, we don't look whether there's an anion there or not and then if we call these holes and then we just put the anion that we want to use to store the information in the holes. And uh, another way we found is to actually redefine the way the syndrome measurement works such that the, uh, the abelian anions can mimic some of the properties of non-abelian anions and, uh, and have this non-trivial execution space. So, to do that, we introduce new quasi particles. We don't call them anions anymore because they don't actually behave in a way that can be described as anions. So we just call them quasi particles. They're things that exist on Earth. And uh, so we call these five five bars and lambda. And the projector onto the state of there being a quasi particle phi on a vertex V is equal to the projector onto there being an E1 or an E4. So basically that means that if there's an E1 anion or an E4 anion living on And so the syndrome has now been redefined not to distinguish between E1 and E4 anymore, uh, but to, to instead define it to be this phi. And similarly, we have a phi bar, which is E2 or E5. And um, then finally, we just uh, redefine the E3 anion to be called lambda. And uh, the 
diffusion rules, then, uh, if we take one of these five fuzzy particles and we take another five fuzzy particles and we fuse them together, then sometimes they will annihilate and become vacuum. And sometimes they won't annihilate, but they'll instead become a lambda. So we have this now uh, fusion space that we would expect to get from the non linear We have similar fusion rules here that uh, if we have, uh, the reason this works is because um, we, when we have this phi, we, it could be an E1, and then this phi bar could be an E5, and they're the antiparticles of each other, so they would uh, annihilate. But we could have an E1, and we could have an E2, say, which would combine to form an E3, which is the lambda. Uh, then we also have these fusion rules down here, such as phi cos lambda equals phi, so if we have a phi and we have a lambda and we bring them together, then um, the phi somehow sort of eats the lambda and we can't see it anymore. We just see that they a phi. And uh, phi bar is the same thing. And uh, lambda is its own kind of one. Uh, yeah, so the redefined syndrome, if we now use these projectors instead of the ones we put, uh, we'll see that there are these five and five bars hanging around, but it, it won't know what they'll fuse to, so we can store quantum information on the, the fusion channel, and it won't be disturbed when we try and error correct the syndrome. So, we use these to store a qubit, <laughs> and so the way we can store a qubit on four vertices is to take uh, two pairs And um, these were, so the phi and the phi bar and the lambdas were all stored on uh, vertices. We can do exactly the same well, with these uh, E uh, anions. We can do exactly the same thing on plaquettes with uh, the M anions. And we call these things chi, chi bar, and mu. You know, so everything's the same. Uh, we, we store our zero in there being a, a chi, chi bar pair that fuses the vacuum, and one as a chi chi bar pair that's used to a, a mu. So, uh, for the braiding of these particles, if we braid a lambda around a mu, what we get is a phase of minus one. So if we have uh, a qubit stored in these phi chi bar pairs, and another one stored in these chi chi bar pairs, and then we take this whole pair and braid it around that pair. Well, if they're both in the state zero, then these two are fused to the vacuum, these two are fused to the vacuum. So when we're doing this braiding, we're just taking the vacuum around the vacuum, which does nothing. And so if we're in the state zero, one or one zero, we're either taking the vacuum around something or something around the vacuum, which also does nothing. So the only time when something happens is when we're in state one, one, where these two would fuse to a lambda, these would fuse to a mu, so this braiding is braiding a lambda around a mu, we get a phase of minus one. And so we can see that we get the uh, controlled phase gate on these logical qubits by braiding. Um, one other important operation to note is that if we, store, we have these phi's and these phi bars living on 
And um, so that means that to do an, a measurement in the logical X spaces, we just need to do a measurement on that single spin, either spin one or spin four. So uh, when we, if we move these quasi particles far away from each other, then uh, they're hard for logical operations to happen, but if we move them together, then we can very easily do a measurement just on a single spin, even though the logical states are stored on, on many spins. And another way to utilize single spin measurements is to apply, apply a projector either to spin 1 or to spin 4 um, of this form. So this is a projector, so you have to trust it. Um, you can see that this has sigma x cubes and sigma z cubes. So what it does is it creates this superposition of, of mu's and lambdas. On the, uh, so if you apply it here to spin 1, it'll create... Uh, so the 1 will do nothing, the, the, this here will create a mu there and a mu there. And this will create a, a lambda there and a lambda there, and this will create a a mu there and a mu there. So what we can do is measure here to see if there's a mu. If there is, we, we keep the state and um, and get rid of the mu's. And what that leaves us with is uh, a logical state encoded on these five and five bars of uh, this form here, which we call a p to b. And this is a very useful logical state because it allows us to do some games. Um, in a very similar way, if we had chi's and chi bars, we could create a, a say, a theta p stored on black ants. So, with these states, then we can do universal quantum computation. So, if we have an arbitrary logical state psi and one of these a theta states, we entangle them, we measure, just using these single spin measurements. And this entanglement is uh, the control phase, so it's done by breaking. Then we get um, rotations of theta in, in the z basis. And the theta comes from here, so we, we've prepared these, these a theta states according to some whatever theta it was that we wanted to do a, a rotation. And similarly, we can rotate in the, the x space, in, in the x basis, and that requires a bit bigger circuit with these plus states, which can just be sing, uh, similarly prepared by single spin measurements, just by doing these uh, x measurements. And um, we can also do other, we can also do um, control uh, entangling gates between a normal entangling gate and the control states has to work between a, something stored on the vertices and something stored on the x. So it might not be that we can always do it between one. Because you might, uh, so it might be that we can have do single cubic rotations on, on, a, on a plaquette type cubic and, and on vertex type cubic, but we can never really mix them in the way we want using entangling. So, <coughs> If the fact that we can do entangled gates on two vertex type cubits by this circuit uh, allows us to say that we should do have universal quantum computation because we have single spin rotations that are entangled. Uh, there is another gate set that you can employ without breaking because it may be that experimenters don't want to do that for some reason. Um, and that just involves the cooperation of the lattice space. So, uh, for the errors that can occur to our logical uh, qubits, these happen when, when some errors acting on the system create stray anions, and these anions either loop around our fives and our chi's, or they tunnel between them. So the way we do this is we can just move these things far apart from each other, and then the probability of these happening becomes smaller. Also, we, we measure the syndrome, and then we see where the anions are, we can annihilate them before they do any of the things we don't want them to do. Also, we can bring in further quality particles, more fives, uh, and we can create 
repetition codes in a quite natural way. Um, also, there's a Hamiltonian, which I haven't mentioned today, but it's well known that these uh, Hamiltonian G U's on these blocks and they provide an addition protection of an energy gap. And there is uh, experimental proposals to realize the Hamiltonian, so it's not completely time uh, stuff. So, so what we found is that quantum information can be stored using abelian anions. Um, because usually people just assume non-abelian anions, they're the, they're the good ones that can do fun things. Uh, abelian anions are a bit rubbish. But we're finding that they're quite good. Uh, we can manipulate the information using braiding, um, which we'd expect to be easy experimentally. And also single spin measurements, which is hopefully quite easy to do. And using these, you can get universal bond computation. Um, so the encoding is, can be shown to be equivalent to that in, in non abelian anions. We, we looked at a specific model of non abelian anions, um, called DS3, uh, and we found, we, we called it a part CR works and found that it could be realized with abelian systems. And uh, the method we use is, is general, so it could be applied to other abelian models. Um, and that's it. Thank you for your time. No questions? The anions you use, are those practically implementable or not? Or is that a difficult question to uh, answer? Uh, well, with uh, physical systems, then, yeah. then we are um, working with some people that work on Josephson junctions, and it seems that using things that are quite natural with Josephson junctions, you can realise these these anion models based upon cyclic groups. So yeah, it can be done. Because that's often a, a, a block. Often people give talks and say, yeah. "You can do it like this, except <laughs> can't actually do it." Yes, yeah. but they. So for the DZ2 model, which is also known as the Torah code, they have, with Joseph conjunctions, um, come up with a, a proof of principle, and DZ6 isn't that much different. So I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. It might happen. kind of are using that too, we just we just um, pretending we're not. So because we're we're using a sigma z cubed for example. That's what creates our, our lambdas. <coughs> and so sigma z cubed squared is identity. <coughs> Thank all the speakers for giving really nice talks. And by the way, we're all seven.